Good afternoon, students. Um, I am Miss Nampala. I am your new English tutor, replacing Miss Amulungu. Welcome to English One. I wish you all to be hardworking, dedicated, and self driven students in this course. This presentation covers the subject content in brief and some general guidelines that I want everyone to keep in mind when preparing for the 2019 examinations. I will discuss some of the content in the study guide in order to help you prepare for the coming exams. By now, you should have a good idea what the subject is about as you have completed an assignment. Use the study guide to prepare for the examinations. You should pay attention to the exit learning outcomes in the index of your study guide. Pay attention to the learning outcomes of every unit of the study guide. This will help you in order to know what is what is asked of you, what you are supposed to know in the whole uh, English uh, subject. In Unit 1, there are certain, certain topics. For example, we have areas of language skills, which are phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Now, with the following language skills, you should be able to define or explain what is morphology and you should be able to give examples of what it means by morphology or syntax, semantics or pragmatics. You should be able to differentiate between the different language skills in Unit 1. Number 2, we have uh, the difference between primary and second language. Now, you might be asked to differentiate between primary and second language. For example, you, you, you exp so you have to explain what is primary language and then you give your examples. And then you also explain what it means by second language and then you also give an example so that you can differentiate between the two. Number three, we have informal language. And we have a few uh, uh, topics there, which is subjectivity and objectivity. You should be able to differentiate between a, a statement that is subjective and a statement that is objective and you should also be able to give an example of a statement that is subjective or a statement that is objective and then we have effect and an opinion these two these two mean two different things so just like subjectivity and objectivity you should be able to differentiate between effect and an opinion and also you should be able to come up with your own example do not use the examples that are already in the study guide and we have bias and prejudice you should also be able to def to define what is a bias or what is a prejudice and give your own examples as well we have denotation and con connotation also, you differentiate, you explain what it means by connotation, and you give an example. That implies with everything else under informal language. You should also study the national, the Namibian rational and aims for English for the upper primary learners. So you should be able to different to, 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 to explain what are the aims 
of the English for the upper primary learners. Why should why are uh, why should upper primary learners be taught English? For example, you should be able to if the question says discuss, please discuss as such and do not copy and paste from your study guide the way it is exactly. You should be able to how do you, to do it yourself on your own without using the study guide. In unit 2, you should know why it is important for a teacher in Namibia to be proficient in English. You as a teacher, why should you have good language, why should you have good English skills? When you are answering this question, it is very tricky because in the study guide it has too many unnecessary information that you're not supposed to do because you copy and paste everything from the study guide. What you're supposed to do is just explain why is it important for a teacher in Namibia to be proficient in English. Uh, you should be able to get to the point. Do not, this, do not write any other unnecessary information that you are not asked of. You should be able to... to to differentiate between the different language, different approaches of language development. For example, we have the constructivist approach, and we have the behaviorist perspective of language development, and we have the interactionist perspective of language development. So we have three approaches to language development. On each approach, you should be able to to, 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 to explain what does the behaviorist perspective uh, entail, what does it talk about, what is it about. And you should also be able to provide uh, valid or rather um, relevant uh, examples with your language, uh, with your approaches of language development. And then we have uh, the communicative language te teaching as the best approach a teacher can use in English speaking lessons. You should be able to state why you are saying that the communicative language teaching is the best approach. You should motivate me why you are saying that the communicative language teaching is the best approach for a teacher to use when they are teaching an English speaking lesson. We have the physical characteristics of upper primary up uh, sorry we have the physical characteristics of upper primary learners what are the phys what uh, uh, physical characteristics should an upper primary learner possess you should be able to differentiate that we have stages of language development they are in the study guide and we have a few of them. So for, so for each stage, you should be able to define the stage, give an example if need be. And you should also, when you are, you, when you are answering your questions, you should look at the marks allocated per question. For ex sometimes your questions, one question has 25 marks, but uh, you, you, you only provide, let's say, five facts for a question that has 25 marks uh, it, it, it's not um it's not um it's not it's not going hand in hand with your marks because you're giving me five facts and there's 25 marks so you probably if the facts you have given me are not even uh relevant you might not gain any marks and you lose your own 25 marks now how we also have how a teacher can create a good language learning environment. As a class teacher, how will you make your classroom a good language learning environment? How would you create your class in order for it to be a good language learning environment for the learners? There are a few steps that you can follow in order to do that. And you should just be able to explain what you should do and what you should not do. In your classroom. Unit 3. Number 1 we have 
Activities you may use for teaching learners to listen to English pronunciation. Pronunciation is a, is a very important skill in the English language. Now you as a teacher, which activities will you use to teach learners to listen to pronunciation? Number two, we have the techniques or strategies for preparation for listening. Which strategies or techniques will you use when you are preparing for listening? We do listening. We do listenings in our classrooms. So, which strategies and techniques will a teacher use in order to make sure that the learners listen to you? attentively and answer the questions that they are supposed to answer also a teacher as a teacher you should be able to uh, to 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 pick up the bad listening habits among your learners you should be able to tell me why you are saying that this is a bad listening habit and also we have um, effective interpersonal communication which one are the effective interpersonal communication? We have barriers of communication and we also have advantages. So you should be able to give, uh, if it's a barrier, you give an example as well if you are asked to do so. And we will give the advantages of interpersonal communication or rather the advantages, the advantages of effective interpersonal communication. We also have the importance of stories. Differentiate or explain to me why you are saying that, why are stories important to the learners? What do they do to the learners? Do the learners uh, gain any knowledge from stories? Do they, does it in, improve their vocabulary? Does it, what, what, why should learners uh, be told, why should they be told stories? So that is what you are supposed to do there. What one can do to become a good listener? We have guidelines. What should, a, well, for example, what can a learner do in order to become a good listener? We have uh, listening. Yes, listening is a skill. But uh, what else can a learner do in order for them to listen uh, attentively in the class in the classroom? Number seven. We have lesson preparations when it comes to a lesson preparation many of the students do not really understand the 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 stages under a lesson plan and many of you do not know how to come up with a, a proper lesson plan I've, I've seen this in your when i marked your assignments so when you are writing your lesson plan Make sure that your, your objectives are met. Ensure that competencies are tested. I am going to explain to you the, uh, what you should write down when you are writing a lesson plan. For example, we have objectives and we have uh, um, basic competencies and we have the lesson presentation. And we also have uh, a lot of um, different stages under a lesson plan now i'm going to start with the theme on your lesson plan it there's a uh, they, it, it's it's drafted that you should write a theme for your lesson plan now where do you get this theme the theme there that you're gonna write on your lesson plan should come from the syllabus it's the cross curricular issues the ones in the syllabus for example we have hiv and H aids we have ict we have population education and we have lots of uh, issues that are already in the syllabus so your theme topic should come from the syllabus it's in the syllabus so the theme there for example let's say it's hiv and aids whatever it is that you are giving let's say you are having a passage that the learners are going to read that passage should be about hiv and aids nothing else that's why we are going to have our theme as hiv and aids and then we have the topic now where do we get the topic the topic is also in your syllabus it's right after the themes 
what they give you HIV and AIDS, for example, under themes. Now, for the topics, what will the topic be? The topic will be uh, maybe what um, the 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 dis, uh, for example, the 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 disadvantages of HIV and AIDS. That will be your topic because it's already de derived from your theme. So please, when you're uh, filling in your lesson plan do not write there under your theme do not write the um, listening comprehension or anything else get the theme and the topic from the syllabus and then we have also syllabus objectives these ones are also in your syllabus they are under learning objectives and the basic competencies they are also in your syllabus and it's written under uh, basic competency in your syllabus so it's very important that when you are filling in your assignment or when you are writing an exam you should know your basic competencies that are in your syllabus meaning that when you study for your exam you should study your study guide and also your syllabus for your english language okay so when it comes to basic competencies, please do not write all the competencies the way they are appearing in the syllabus. For example, you might have seven basic competencies. Only choose one competency or two competencies that you are going to master in your lesson. Only choose one competency. Do not write all seven competencies because you are not going to cover all the seven in one lesson. And then we have um, we have lesson presentation. What does it mean by lesson presentation? Lesson presentation is the is the overall plan. For example, uh, how are you going to, to to present your lesson? Are the learners going to be in groups? Are they are they going to do group work? Are they going to do peer teaching? Or are they going to listen to an audio? It's the broader. It's broader than the presentation of subject matter. So you just inform the learners, or you just inform the learners that you are going to be in group. You should group yourselves into five or into four, or that somebody is going to teach you from the. Uh, you 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 try you maybe pick out a learner from the classroom who's going to do what and who's going to do what you just tell the learners how the lesson is going to go about and then we have the presentation of subject matter in this uh, stage you include learners and teachers activity so you have your activity and the learners activities for example what are you going to do as a teacher what will you be doing are you going to read the passage for the learners or are you going what are you going to do and the learners what will the learners do are they going to write the questions down or are they going to write what they hear from the audio what is it that what are the activities of the learner and the teachers and then we have the homework the homework there is always a part where you have to write homework and it's written homework revision what does this um, stage entail the monitoring of homework is not you are not you are not writing the homework you are giving to the learners in that lesson you will check the homework of the previous day if you gave homework the previous day you check that homework if it's done and then you also mark it if need be that time and then you also give revision so you 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 recap on yesterday's homework that homework there is not for that day that it's not for that day's lesson but it's for the previous day's homework and then we have after the homework we have consolidation what does consolidation mean consolidation means after you have presented your lesson after you have taught let's say you are teaching your learners how or you are teaching them on um, a reading read how to read you should consolidate your lesson how will you consolidate your lesson you emphasize on the important points of what was taught in the lesson you summarize your lesson what is it that you want the learners to remember at the end of the day that is what you should 
that's what it means by consolidation in in other words it's a recap or you 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 just emphasize on the important points of what you have taught in your lesson and then we have assessment or homework or task now this is not the same as uh, homework of the previous day now this assessment is the one you give to the learners in after you have taught them in the lesson it may be a test or it may be homework or it may be a class activity or it might be a group work so this assessment here is on what you have taught in the lesson okay to be done by the learners of course and then we have english across the curriculum now many of you do not know you do not understand this part of the lesson plan what does this mean it means that as a language teacher how did you include other subject knowledge in your lesson for example the learners have other subjects they do not only have english isn't it they have social studies they have environmental studies they have other subjects as well so now you as an english teacher how did you include other subject knowledge in your lesson like for example earlier i gave an example that if you are if uh they are reading a passage and it's on hiv and aids for example the fact that the learners read about hiv and aids in your english lesson you are you have already included knowledge from the other class which is probably natural science or anything else or let's say you 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 were doing a listening on uh let's say maybe uh, a listening on a biography of uh, Nelson Mandela in your classroom so if you used a text on Nelson Mandela that means that you have already brought in knowledge from the other subject which is what social studies so under english across the curriculum you should you 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 should evaluate and check what did the learners learn from my lesson that is from other subjects so how did you cover subject knowledge from other different um, subjects and then we have a reflection now what does this reflection mean this is done after the lesson is delivered after you are done delivering your uh, after you are done delivering your lesson you have taught the kids how to read and you have taught them or you have taught them how uh, to listen in uh, in class on your they were listening and they were answering questions now as a teacher you go back you sit down and you sit down and you ask yourself did my learners acquire the skills that i wanted them to acquire are the objectives met do they know how to read do they know how to listen how will you know that your learners have acquired the skills that you have um, that you wanted to teach them you will go back to the task to the assessment task that you have given them did the learners did many of the learners pass this test or did they pass the assessment task did they pass the class activity how did the learners do so from what the learners have done how they have done they have they passed or have they failed that's how where you will reflect so what and you should able to give your strategies how you are going to improve on it if the learners didn't do well will you repeat the lesson or if the learners did well what else will you do there is somewhere somehow there might be something that you didn't do good so that's what it means by reflection now what should you do when you are in an exam room number 1 you should be able to read the instructions and questions carefully what does this mean make sure that you understand the question before you attempt to answer it because many of you tend to uh, you just read you don't really understand what the question is asking you so before you answer a question make sure that you understand the question if it says that explain you should be able to explain if they are saying that explain with examples please do not ignore the questions 
explain and give examples if it says give to a give two examples you should give two examples like the like the question says because the marks are located includes your explanation and your two examples that they ask you to give now as a teacher always use practical examples when necessary to validate your answers you should use your own practical examples. Do not, do not memorize the examples in the study guide. Also, you should be able, as you are a teacher, you should be able to come up with your own examples. You should provide sufficient answers, meaning don't write too little and do not write too much. How will you know that what you, are, what you have written is not too much or is not too less? You should look at the number, the marks allocated to you at the end of your question. It will determine the length of your answer. So if it says, if the question, for example, has only five marks, do not write me a whole page. Obviously, I only need five marks from you. So you should be able to determine what what is the uh, what is the question really asking from you uh, now please do not try to memorize everything also read the instructions carefully your answers must be complete it's an english uh, it's english language you should use your punctuation marks in the right way if your sentence if you are writing a sentence, it should start with a capital letter and end with a full stop. Because we are English teachers and we are going to train learners how to do this, isn't it? Alright, so you should also write as neatly as you can. And please do not leave questions unanswered. You will lose marks for this. Only You might lose a 25 marks and you just leave out a question that is not answered and probably your, your question was uh, maybe 30 marks or 25 or 20 marks. So you lose part of your exam marks already. Also, again, use your own examples. Now, if you have any other questions related to English 1, you may contact me. My cell phone number is 081-610-9072. You can contact me. You can text and I'll call you back. Good luck with your exams.